the former Supreme Court Judge K. M. M. B. Kulatunga wrote a book before he passed away later entitled Disorder in uh, uh, Sri Lanka. This was written during the early uh, 21st century and uh, he dedicated the book to the future generation of uh, 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 Sri Lankans. The book basically tried to trace the beginning of disorder within Sri Lanka and the culmination of that uh, situation by the time of uh, his uh, uh, retirement. The analysis of the disorder uh, has been based mainly on various interferences the Sri Lankan politicians who were in power made to assert their uh, influence over the system of uh, justice uh, since the uh, independence. The culmination of these things uh, begin to happen later uh, and the accumulated effect of all that was to create a situation of uh, disorder. The purpose of this short video is to uh, discuss how the existing constitution of uh, Sri Lanka, that is the constitution of 1978, contributed a great deal to the uh, spread of uh, disorder which gradually has come up to a point as it is now where none of the uh, basic aspects of governance whether it is from the point of view of economy or from the uh, point of view of administration or from po the point of view of guaranteeing law and order have all fallen into this situation of a colossal uh, disorder. Uh, this is a very important aspect to uh, uh, consider and something that uh, is very often uh, forgotten uh, in uh, discussions about the present uh, crises uh, facing the country. All the blame is usually put for various kinds of actions, one may say the rogue actions of uh, 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 politicians and that of course is quite excusable because uh, enormous amount of irresponsible uh, actions have contributed uh, to the present crisis. However, what is often forgotten is that how much tampering with the constitutional order uh, is at the root of the present state of uh, disorder. This means that disorder was created deliberately at the beginning, that is when the 1978 constitution was made because the order that prevailed since then was an obstacle to the kind of uh, rule that the new uh, government led by Mr. J. R. Jayawardena was proposing. It was incompatible to have the constitutional order of constitutional order that was uh, introduced 
during the time of independence to go in hand in hand with the kind of the governance that was introduced by 1978 constitution there is a direct logical connection between this 1978 constitution and the changes it made to the development of a situation of disorder uh, within sri lanka it may be seen by some as a exaggeration if one were to say that the disorder was deliberately created they may ask why why should anybody who is ruling the country who naturally want order to prevail will create a uh, a situation which will result uh, in development of unprecedented uh, disorder there are very cogent reasons as to why the leader of the political party which had almost uh, over 80% of the seats in the parliament and who could therefore get anything done through the parliament want to uh, create a kind of situation which uh, would create more problems uh then which are prevailing at the time if we were to examine the reasons i think there were certain fears that contributed uh to wanting to discontinue with the kind of order that prevailed previous to the 1978 uh, constitution first the in the earlier situation the the, uh, the order that prevailed having uh periodic uh, elections and change of governments was an essential component the prevailing view during the whole period of after the independence was that it is difficult for any government to gain a second term uh, in uh, sri lanka uh, due to various circumstances particularly due to the lack of possibilities of achieving some economic progress which will better the conditions of the people in the country any government expected that whatever the popularity it may have at a particular uh, moment due mainly to the dissatisfaction that prevail among the people about the the ruling regime they may be able to win an election and sometimes even get some landslide victories as it happened in 1956 1970 and in this instance also 1978 these landslide victories were no guarantee of a uh, continuing popularity so therefore question rose in within the new uh, regime of jaya jawadin how to keep the majority it has in parliament which was achieved in 1977 if there is going to be regular uh, elections it is obvious 
that the situation will change for change adversely for the government so unless this the possibility of preventing a free and fair election is achieved there was no guarantee that the government would have been able to keep the majority the absolute majority it has uh, in parliament and this absolute ma majority was considered the most important element uh, to have if the government is to be kept uh, alive uh, under the same uh, party and same leadership therefore the attack on the electoral system was a necessary condition for keeping the absolute majority uh, in uh, parliament now due to the reforms introduced by donamore uh, commission already in 1931 the adult franchise and the holding of elections somehow has had become a very much of a central part of uh, the political system of sri lanka perhaps the only part of the sri lankan political system that would have been most uh, difficult to tamper with was the right uh, to have uh, elections on a regular basis so it was a formidable task for a ruler to envisage that it is possible to tamper with this political consciousness that existed Uh, within the uh, uh, country it was not possible to gain a mandate uh, for that purpose so therefore it has to be done in a much more subtle way and that was the reason main reason for the development of the 1978 constitutional model there is a popular misconception that the central element of the 1978 constitution was the executive presidency that it has create it created and the enormous power that was uh, given to the president under the uh, constitution however the real issue relating to the 1978 constitution was not the executive presidency in fact the executive president depended on the absolute majority that a ruling party has within the parliament and the capacity of the leader of that party to have an absolute loyalty of the party so that he could be guaranteed that there will not be a challenge to him from within the party thus there are two objectives one is at all cost absolute majority within the parliament 
for the ruling party should be somehow or kept secondly that no possibilities for an internal revolt within the existing political party the ruling party should be allowed it is these elements that was basically achieved through the 1978 constitution the method employed was uh, simply uh, very simple the constitution the 78 constitution provided a way of amendments or changes to the constitution that meant that a government can change any part of the constitution provided it has an absolute majority in parliament and also the possibility if at all it comes to it to win a, a referendum either by hook or crook if these two conditions are to be fulfilled it required a a, a fundamental change uh, in the constitution the solberry constitution was premise under the principles of liberal uh, uh, democracy and within the liberal democracy regular elections are a central part of the constitutional order so uh, to do away uh, with that by way of a certain laws which may be passed by the absolute majority and if necessary uh, referendum was a very fundamental constitutional change now this issue came up uh later uh, more or less at the same time uh, in india when indira gandhi tried to bring about certain uh, laws to tamper with the constitutional order of enshrined in the indian constitution the supreme court when the matter came up before it held a distinction between the laws that can be introduced by a parliament and function of making of constitutions a legislature could make laws within the framework given by the constitution but it cannot change the structure of the constitution what is fundamental to the constitution cannot be changed that is an act that can be done only by the people directly not through the legislature so therefore there are certain elements in the democratic system within the framework of liberal democracy which even the parliament cannot do despite of the fact that parliament is supreme parliamentary supremacy does not mean that the parliament can do anything it wants it meant that legislature can do everything that the constitution allowed them to do 
and the constitution could allow them to do only those things that does not fundamentally contradict and destroy liberal democratic framework. It was this that was fundamentally attacked by the 1978 uh, 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 constitution. That is why in 1982, when Jaya Jawadana realized that if there was a parliamentary election, even if, he, if his party can win the election, still he will not have he will, uh, the, two, the absolute majority that he, he had till then, that he wanted not to have the elections as required by the constitutional tradition of liberal democracy. So he devised a method of changing that, saying that by referendum he could put it to the people as to whether we can have uh, we can continue with the same uh, 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 elected members which were elected some six years back. Also for also to function for another six years. Now this is logically absurd, legally absurd and uh, it destroyed the very idea of uh, functioning within uh, a system which depended on election of representatives from uh, time to time for uh, to conduct the affairs of the government. Unfortunately, it was this that has enabled all other problems of the 1978 cons uh, uh, constitution uh, to accumulate. For example, once it is allowed that anything can be passed as law so long as there can be a uh, two-thirds majority and a referendum. The many uh, amendments were introduced which are opposed to the norms of uh, liberal democracy. For example, it is a fundamental aspect of liberal democracy that there should be a proper notice of any law that is to be passed in the country to the people and the people should have adequate time to consider, uh, to, to express their opinions, to mobilize public opinion, to exercise pressure within a legal framework and also where necessary to seek judicial uh, uh, redress. Now, several amendments uh, to the constitution was passed in order to have a fast food kind of uh, legislation. The parliament or which means the president proposed a law and within the shortest possible time it has to be passed. Now in order to do that another fundamental aspect of a liberal democracy was bypassed or changed and that is the right of judicial review any time if the highest courts think that the law that has been passed is illegal and should not be allowed to have the effect of law. This is called judicial review and it can happen prior to a law being passed or it can happen anytime even after the law has been passed. This ensures that things that should not be regarded as illegal should be part of law. However, this rule also, also changed. A short period was allowed to 
take some objections before the Supreme Court and then once the uh, law is passed, however fundamentally wrong the legal provisions are, they, they remain valid as law and there is nothing anybody can do about it, which means that the judiciary which has the duty to correct when the other branches of uh, governance do something wrong is taken away. Now, all these are many other uh, details. If you go into details about uh, what is wrong with the uh, constitution, there are large body of detailed wrongs. But the purpose of this short video is not to go into all those details, but to go to this fundamental issue that once you tamper with the constitutional order, once you tamper with the normative framework of a constitution, then you bring about constitutional confusion, constitutional illogicality, which ultimately result in disorder in every area of life. It creates disorder, first of all, in lawmaking and law enforcement. When the lawmaking and law enforcement can, goes wrong, then the only remedy you have for preventing disorder is taken away. It is, the disorder is prevented within a functioning rule of law system by speedy investigating into any violations which are called crimes and where there is evidence, speedy prosecutions, thereby uh, not allowing that to cause for more and more of similar uh, acts, whereby to prevent disorder. Disorder means repetition of illegal acts over and over again to an extent where the even the expectation that law will prevail in everything is lost. When the people lose the faith that law will prevail always. That is, the good law will prevail and the good law will always prevent bad things from happening. And that is how disorder is prevented, whether it is about crimes or whether it is about property uh, uh, matters or whether it is about corruption, abuse of power, and all that. Everything depends on following of a certain order based on the law. But if the supreme law of the country allows this order, then how is it possible to avoid the situation of disorder? Now that is the issue that should be considered when we talk about the changes what you call the systemic change. Systemic wrongs in the prevailing situation, present situation, is rooted in the supreme law of the country, the constitution. Unless that is addressed, it is not possible to put this system back into a situation where order will prevail and without order prevailing it is not possible to overcome any of the crises we are facing whether in the area of economy 
governance or in the legal system itself. 